Hey, what's going on guys? So uh, I broke out the camera here to tell you an interesting story. The bank gave me a bunch of money that's not mine, and now they want it back. So uh, <laughs> this has never happened before, and it is kind of a unique situation in the timing of everything. And I just got off the phone with uh, the woman at the bank, probably the bank manager, and uh, I was pretty irate with her on the phone, uh, which I kind of regret because I wasn't really fully understanding the situation. <laughs> And uh, but now that the dust is kind of settled and uh, I understand exactly what's going on, um, I'm, it's cool. I'm, I'm cool about it, and I'm, I'm actually waiting for a call from the uh, district manager. So let me let me start from the beginning. Uh, yesterday, and by the way, this is all from coin hunting. Okay, um, I don't think this uh, problem would have happened. Well, maybe it would have happened if you didn't coin hunt, but I definitely it, it involves the coin machine. So. Yesterday, I went to uh, run some errands with my wife, and I brought down a bunch of uh, half dollars to the bank. I went to one particular bank because they have a coin machine there. Actually, several banks that I, I have accounts now have coin machines, but this one I don't usually go to. So their coin machine works a little bit differently, and I'll explain why that's important in a moment. But So I'm throwing coins in the machine. I get to like 260 bucks, something like that, and the machine stops because it's full. Now remember, I'm only putting in half dollars. I have about a thousand, a little over a thousand dollars and half dollars that I'm putting in there. So uh, the machine stops, um, and what happens is a little receipt prints. I grab the receipt, it shows the amount that I put in there, right? Totally normal. This is what happens at all the other coin machines I've used before. Uh, so the you know, I go to the teller and say, hey, the machine stopped because it's filled, okay, fine, no problem. And a woman comes over to empty the machine. So she, you know, opens the machine. Now, mind you, I still have a bunch of coins. There's like a, a conveyor belt. So I still have a bunch of coins on there. It stopped because it's full. So she goes to this process and she opens the machine up and takes the bag out, puts a new bag in. Now, I'm only doing half dollars, but it, it so happened that the, the quarters and I think the dimes were also filled. So she went on the other side and she had to do the bags for those too. It kind of took a while. You know, they're heavy bags and it's a process. So, and I don't care. I'm just kind of waiting around. So when she's all done, the machine wouldn't kick over. It still said it was full, so it's still a problem. So she opened the machine up again and tinker around until eventually she got it, you know, fixed and stuff. So she said, you know, it's all ready to go. So I put that one ticket in my pocket. Now I start, you know, it, it asks you, you know, do you want to continue to add coins or cash out? So I said, you know, continue to add coins. So, you know, the coins on the conveyor belt started going in, started counting again. Put all the rest of my coins in the machine. When it was all done, it printed a receipt. So the first receipt said like 260 something dollars. The second receipt said $1,017, something around that number. And so I have my two receipts. I, I'm with my wife. My wife is on the phone with someone. It's a very important call. She had to actually leave the bank, came in, you know, to take the phone call, came in while I was doing the coins, told me what was going on. It's something completely unrelated to the bank, but it's important news. So my mind is very much on that. That's an important key. This is something I didn't notice here that no one noticed. So I go to the, uh, um, you know, the counter there. I give the girl my two tickets, 1,017, 260 something. First she does the 260 something, gives me the cash. Okay, counts it out, that's that. Then does 1,017, counts it out, that's that. Bundle the money together, stick it in my pocket, go out in the car, run our other errands. Don't even think about anything, anything of it, right? So today <laughs> I get a phone call. Now, let me actually backtrack a little. Yesterday, I come home, I take the cash, I put it in the appropriate spots because some of it went my wallet, some of it went to, you know, to my wife or her wallet, so she has some cash on her. Um, actually, before we went home, I should note that I, I deposited some of that money into um, a different bank, which I stopped at, to pay bills. So the, the, the money was divided up. You know, there's not much thought going on here in my mind. It's just, okay, I got my money. Some goes to you, some goes to me, some goes in the bank, pay the bills, done, whatever. I'm moving on. I'm not even thinking about it. So I get a call, like, at this point, maybe half an hour ago or so. And it's the bank manager, I believe. Um, and she says, hey, did you come in yesterday and use the coin machine? Yeah, yeah, I did. That was me or whatever. She's like, well, we, uh, we accidentally gave you too much money. And we need you to bring it back. <laughs> so, so I'm like, what? I was totally blindsided by this. I, I'm like, what are you talking about? So she's like, well, you know, you had two tickets 
and um, the first ticket for the 260 something dollars or whatever, that was not supposed to be cashed. She says, I have the tickets here because, you know, when I cash them in, they save the tickets because um, I guess it all has to be correlated with the machine and everything else and all the paperwork that goes, you know, with that whole thing at the bank. And she's like, well, you know, the thousand dollar one was the total in coins you had, but the 266 was not cashable. And I said, well, what do you mean? Like, what are you talking about? I, mind you, when she called me, not that it matters, but I'm busy doing something else. I'm always busy doing something. So my mind is definitely not on this. And I'm getting a call from the bank saying, hey, you got to bring money back. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So totally blindsided, totally confused. So she breaks it down again. And she says, okay, well, so you brought this amount in the bank, in the machine, whatever, and this other thing is, wasn't supposed to be cashable. I'm like, what do, you, what do you mean it's not supposed to be cashable? She's like, well, you know, when the machine stops because it's filled, it prints a receipt, but it just tells you what there is on the receipt. But that's not redeemable. When, they, when the machine kicks back over and you continuously put money in, it, it starts from the balance you had. Now, that's important to know because all the coin machines I've used thus far, and I've used probably three or four of them, at at least two different banks, different branches, or different uh, banks completely, and then different branches. All the other machines is, you know, when the machine gets filled or stopped for whatever reason, it prints a receipt for the exact amount you put in there, and that's it. It starts from zero. So if the machine is broken or whatever, whatever the case may be, that's the amount of money you put in, so now you can go cash that out, you know, get bills or whatever for your coins. This machine works differently. This machine prints that receipt, but it's not redeemable. It's just to let you know how much was in the machine so that when the machine kicks back over again, you can confirm the amount. So let's say you put $10 in the machine and it stops. When you're all done and they're taking the bag, whatever's going on that the machine needs attention, um, what they do is they reset the machine and then it shows a $10 balance and then goes from there. At that point, you can cash it out and you would get another receipt that is redeemable. So... Again, my mind's not really on this completely. Not that that's a great excuse, but it's also, I mean, the machine works completely different than, um, you know, what I'm expecting, what I'm used to. On top of that, with the delays and my wife's phone call and all the stuff, my mind's just not in it. So as she's explaining this to me, I'm, I'm just not understanding. And she's like, well, you know, if you just come back today, you know, we can resolve this here, whatever. And I'm, I'm like, I'm not coming there today. You're, you're like 40 minutes from where I live, you know? And then at this point, She's getting like a little bit like she's trying to stay professional, but she's getting like she's just talking to me like, you know, she's my neighbor or something. Now it's not like a, uh, you know, business thing so much. She's trying to stay professional. I give her credit for that, but she's getting frustrated because she's realizing as I'm arguing about this and trying to explain the situation or trying to understand the situation rather while she's explaining it. Because I'm really not like getting what's going on because how she was explaining it to me, she wasn't talking about the receipt not being redeemable and why. So at some point, I'm like, I'm getting pissed off. You know what I mean? Because, you know, she's like, you got to come back today. We got to resolve this, get the money in the bank. And I'm like, first of all, why, why was I giving that money? Oh, oh, you know, the teller, she's brand new. It's her first day. And I'm like, how's that my fault? She made a mistake, you know? So <laughs> at this point in the conversation, I'm arguing. I'm like, well, I'm not bringing the money back, you know? Oh, well. Maybe she should pay for it, you know what I mean? Because I'm getting pissed off and, and really annoyed. And then, of course, once she hears that, she's starting to get very, um, I don't want to say, like, yeah, I mean, unprofessional, but she's not, like, cursing or anything to me. She, she's being as good as she can be, I suppose, if I was in her position. All right, so, anyway, um, <laughs> so I'm like, tough luck, you know what I mean? And, but that's not how it works, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second as well. But So at some point, she's like, listen, we're not... We're not getting anywhere because I'm like, well, listen, if I come in, I want you to count the coins. I want you to show because I'm convinced during this conversation that the money they gave me was the amount for how many coins are brought there. I'm not thinking about the math because I have the thousand bicentennial coins that I'm, I'm uh, cashing in, which is five hundred dollars. Plus, I had the other amount from the bag that I recently hunted. Sorry about that. Big old truck drove by. So um, anyway, um, so yeah, we're kind of arguing on the phone and I'm basically saying like, well, you're SOL, you know, I'm sorry you have a brand new employee, has no idea what she's doing, but you know, I gave her the ticket, she gave him the money, I guess she has to pay for it, you know what I'm saying, what do you want me to say? And of course, that's not an acceptable answer to her, so we're kind of arguing and at some point she's like, look, we're not getting anywhere, I'm just going to have to call my district manager and, and you know, you know, they're going to just take it out of your account. And I'm like, well, you know, do what you got to do, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so... So that was kind of how it was left. And I'm still waiting for the, uh, the district manager to call me. But so I'm, I'm heated at this point. 
And if you're married, you'll totally understand. So, like, you know, Christina's hearing this in the background, my wife, and, and she's like, well, you know, calm down. What's going on? And so I kind of explain it. And as we talk, and she's the kind of, my wife's the voice of reason. She's like, well, there's no, you know, point in yelling. It's not going to get you anywhere. And, you know, because I'm, I'm pissed. I'm like, you know, if they screwed up, then great. I get to keep the money. That's not how it works. <laughs> so I, I definitely, um... I definitely feel like a, a little embarrassed and I will apologize to the woman just the way I was speaking to her because that's not me. You know, it, it's a bad combination of the, there's things going on in my life right now which are extremely stressful and I was totally caught off guard. I was very focused on something and then I got the call and it, it, it like I said, basically it's just a massive inconvenience. Like you screwed up your person. Like if you're even you a brand new teller. Why isn't there someone watching every move she's, she's doing? Because she literally gave a customer a bunch of money they weren't supposed to have. And now it's a massive hassle for them to get it back. Now, I'm pretty sure there is a legal obligation. If a bank makes a mistake and gives you a bunch of money, you can't just keep it. And uh, I remember there was an article a couple years ago. There was a couple. And there was some kind of transfer mistake. And some, uh, one of the bankers put in the wrong digit. So this couple, like totally blue collar couple, got like $80,000 or something in their account. And they immediately went to take the money out and they went on a shopping spree. And it was a whole big article because the point of the whole thing is that they can't, it's not just free money. Just because a bank makes a mistake doesn't mean you get to keep it. So I kind of remember this as I'm talking to my wife too. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure even if I argue, they, they have a legal right to just take the money. I can't just keep it. So in the end, I am going to give it back to them. Um, but I'm going to wait for the uh, the district manager to call me, and I'm going to see if they can just do it digitally, because I don't want to waste the gas and the time to go down there. Uh, I'm in no rush to go fix their mistake. It's just when I'm talking to this woman, you know, she she's the manager, and she realizes that if she has to call her district manager, people are going to get yelled at. This brand-new girl may or may not be fired over this, um, or at least reprimanded in some way. Who knows? Uh, it, but it's just like it's a weird, weird situation. It's just how everything, you know, came together. The fact that I was completely distracted, the fact that this machine works differently than what I'm used to, the fact that there happened to be a brand new teller there who had no idea what she was doing and gave me money that I wasn't supposed to have and me not realizing that I got more money. Because if the situation was a little different, like if I went there with a check and I was cashing a $25 check and the teller gave me $500, I would be like, no, <laughs> something's not right here. Uh, I, I'm not that kind of person that would just, you know, take things and try to benefit from someone's mistake. You know, I'm a pretty honest person. And if that happened, if I knew they gave me too much money, in the moment, I would have just been like, oh, you gave me too much, whatever. But with all the distractions, and like most times when I go to like a coin machine or something, I know every penny, every penny that is going to that machine to make sure that I'm getting all of my money, right? That's an important thing. In this particular case, I had a ballpark idea of what was there and it just, it, it, it's like, whatever, you know, here's the money and that's it. I didn't focus on the details, so that was my fault. Because if I happen to know exactly how much I was supposed to get, perhaps I could have corrected the teller when she gave me too much or whatever. But like I said, it was a perfect storm for a big mess up. And, uh, and yeah, so they gave me too much money and now I get to give it back. But I'm totally fine with it because it is fair. I'm not looking to benefit from some kind of bank mistake. Uh, it would be great. It'd be cool if they accidentally gave me a couple hundred bucks and I was able to keep it. But morally, I'm not going to keep it. Legally, I can't keep it anyway, even if I didn't care about the moral uh, part of the situation. But yeah, that's the uh, that's the headache of uh, of this morning. So, wow. Yeah, that's it. it's a very, very unique situation that I don't think uh, many people would ever be in. Let me know down in the comment section. Did the bank ever mess up and you got a bunch of money? Or even a couple bucks? You know, has that ever happened to anyone? My entire life, I've never had that happen. I, I believe it's pretty rare that banks make mistakes. Um, but, like, you know, I understand the situation now. Like I said, I, I'd like to... I like to keep this bank account open. You know, I could... I For, like, a brief second, the devil on this shoulder said, well, why don't you just uh, transfer the money? Because I could I could have sent it to one of my other accounts through Zelle. As soon as I hung up the phone with her, I could have transferred the money I have in the account so that the, the account was zero, and then just let them deal with it. They'll close the account or whatever, and I get to keep all the extra money. That was like a like a split. Like, I always think something really evil and, and bad, and, and then I obviously come to my senses, and I don't do those things. But that's immediately what I thought was like, because I was pissed off too. I'm like, you know what? Screw them. 
I'm just going to transfer the money and they'll have to deal with it. I doubt the bank would bring me the court, you know, for 200 bucks, but who knows, maybe they would. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a really weird thing that happened today to me. But uh, I am going to give the money back, but I'm not going to be inconvenienced because they did make a mistake. I'm not going to drive. I'm not going to get my car and rush down there for anything, wasting gas. Um, I'm going to talk to the district manager and I will just, um, you know, maybe just approve them taking out that amount. Um, you know, like whatever I have to do so they can just do it digitally and I don't have to go anywhere. And that'll be the end of it. That's it. But it's kind of a weird thing. And it's also, it's super awkward too because I yelled at the woman and she yelled at me and it was like back and forth and... And, um, like, you know, I do want to go there in the future and use the coin machine, but I'm, I, you know what? I just, I'm going to be that guy now. When I walk in, they're just going to be like, oh, here's that weird guy. What an a-hole. You know, I hate, I hate that. I, I don't, I don't really care what people think of me, but everyone has that thing where you don't want to be the a-hole. You don't want to be that person that people just like dislike or talk crap about when you leave the room. But it is what it is now at this point. But I will give her an apology because it's not it's not me to uh, talk like that. Like, I, I didn't name call. Like, I don't know. I'm making it sound way worse than it was. But I was saying things like, you know, this is ridiculous. And, you know, if the girl made a mistake, maybe she should pay for it and things like that. And I wasn't being rational. I was very upset in the moment. And I was being kind of a jerk. Um, maybe not a-hole status, but definitely jerk. You know what I'm saying? Here's like, you know, really nice is off screen. You can't see that. It's way down there. Really nice. But then, you know, as you progressively get worse and worse, it goes up. So I was like jerk level, uh, but it was getting close to a-hole, you know. So anyway, <laughs> that's my story for today. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed it. A little entertaining. Um, very unique situation. Just the right things happened together to create this situation, but it will get resolved. It's not a big deal. Anyway, this was a very unique situation, so it's not like you have to worry about this coin hunting. Uh, it just so happens that all these things lined up perfectly for this to uh, to have occurred the way it did. Um, if you're, you know, trying to cash a ticket in that's not redeemable, the person at the bank probably knows that. It just so happens that I got a new girl. I wasn't paying attention. I mean, all these things just culminated into this perfect scenario where they went here and they, they shouldn't have they shouldn't have given me that money and i didn't know that i wasn't supposed to take it and well now i got to give it back but no big deal anyway that's all hopefully you guys enjoyed the video <laughs> thanks for watching and let me know if you've ever had a weird bank situation or have you ever yelled at a banker like had an argument in a bank i witnessed that a couple times in my life where um people were just upset about some kind of problem or mistake whether they were justified or not i mean half the time when you see people, like even if like someone's at the register arguing, you don't really know. Is the person, is the customer right? Is the worker right? It's probably half and half, you know, half the time the people are being unprofessional and the other half of the time people are demanding things that they don't deserve, you know? But anyway, <laughs> it's very weird, awkward thing that occurred, but I'll resolve it. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.